All right, good morning. Welcome everybody. And today we're going to be talking about Section 8 uh, housing, questions and answers. So it's going to take a little while for everybody to catch up and get with us. So I'm going to go over some video credits. <clears throat> Let's see. So I want to thank a few people that are supporters of the channel, and that will include uh, Landmark, uh, Charlene, Jennifer Hanna, Dr. Krista, Erica Dunn, uh, Jana Hill, Crystal Addy, and Ashley Washington, uh, Nicole Gross, Angela Martinez, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Freeman, and that should be it for that. So it looks like we've got one person watching. That's good. Um, I'm learning that maybe doing these cast uh, live videos should be done probably at night, but uh, I don't always uh, have time. So today we're going to be talking about specifically Section 8 housing. For those of you that don't know me, uh, I'm an authority on Section 8 housing. I've been doing it close to 18 years, or better yet, 20 years. And uh, I've been a library of around 11,000 manuals. I've dealt uh, with every housing uh, authority and COC in the nation. Uh, Featured exclusively, have my own uh, YouTube channel, the largest YouTube channel, and also I'm on Google as well. And if you haven't had a chance, check out our new website. Um, I just put that up. Uh, there's still going to be some issues there. We're still in development. Uh, I'm hoping to have most of it finished after a couple of months. So beyond that, uh, I offer consulting, consulting uh, 30 minutes for $45. Pretty good deal. I've helped about 11,000 people get their uh, housing choice voucher and other vouchers to get them in housing much quicker than you typically could if you attempted to do this yourself. Uh, you know, we have years and years of the stuff that's been convoluted legislation, different presidents, different rules, and each year it changes, and it makes it difficult for people to understand uh, the total scope of what Section 8 housing is and where you're getting it. So today we'll start with a small lesson on uh, how Section 8 and the housing authorities work around the nation so you understand what you're getting involved in. Now, to be clear, Department of uh, Housing in Washington, D.C., and funds all of these housing authorities. So they cut a check that goes down to the uh, local housing authority in your county. Every county has a housing authority. They all operate differently. They all have different rules. And those rules are written by subcontractors that include legislation. Now, beyond that, the housing authority will typically offer you two options. And that is going to be a housing choice voucher, uh, what used to be known back in the 80s as a Section 8. And then uh, if the housing authority, rather than a private individual, if the housing authority owns the property, then it's called uh, project-based housing. Hey, Jazz, glad to see you on the channel, girl. I was wondering if you were going to show up today. I'd love to see a few other people here uh, for your lunch break. So, yes, I've been getting fancy. You know, the thing about it is uh, people want to see legitimacy in what I do. And the best way to demonstrate that is through... You know, putting up banners and websites and different things uh, to get them there. But the nice part is the price really hasn't changed that much, so I feel pretty good about it. Um, you now, going back to that housing authority, they offer what they call uh, project-based housing if they own it. Now, when it's owned by a private landlord, you receive a housing choice voucher and you go to that landlord. And then you have what you call tenant-based housing. And that's when uh, an owner buys a building and he gets federal tax credits. And in return, he allocates a certain number of units, and that funding is directly shot to, is attached to that particular doorknob or that unit. So, say unit A1. And so that gives you three ways. Now, when it's tenant, uh, tenant based housing, they commonly uh, call that uh, subsidized housing, affordable housing, and low income housing. To be frank with you guys, there's about uh, 20, maybe 33 different names that news and articles and TV give it. But the reality is, you have a housing choice voucher. You have project-based housing, and you have subsidized housing. And uh, when you get away from the housing authority, you have the continuum of care, which deals and addresses uh, homeless people. And that becomes what is known as um, COC housing. At least that's what I call it. And so that's the Housing First Initiative. All right, looks like we're getting a few more comments from Ms. Jans. Uh, it's been 90 days. Nobody's calling me. Virginia will be difficult uh, to the point where I need to try in the state. Well, you know, Virginia, <clears throat> like a lot of the Upper East Coast, is having its problems. This pandemic is not only taking a tough situation, but it's making it much harder now. And I'm having a lot of problems with the Upper East Coast getting people uh, into housing and closing waiting lists. And despite the federal government dumping billions into all of this, the problem is you still have a small housing authority 
with a bunch of people running it, most of which have got their diplomas out of a bubblegum machine. And so things don't happen quickly. And so they, they don't even know how to process the money they've got. So it's easier for them to keep their doors closed and their phones off than to actually earn their paycheck. And uh, yes, I do. I really cannot stand most housing authority employees, except for the ones that are in the rear office. You know, the office with the chandelier in it. So if you ever wonder where those tax dollars go, it's usually that nice computer in the back office. Uh, from what I've seen, most housing authority uh, people are uh, disgruntled, uh, overworked, underpaid, and uh, in general have an attitude. And uh, it makes it tough on my clients, uh, especially now. I want to say that not every housing authority or employee is bad. Uh, but my encounter over the last 18 years is I have to go and go and pretty much fight a war with these people for my clients. Deal with a lot of rejection, a lot of attitude, and a lot of mixed up individuals that actually hold that position. Why the hell you would ever get involved in wanting to be a housing authority employee if you actually hated dealing with people is beyond me, beyond any understanding. So beyond that, uh, so I have to, I'm going to be getting rid of this. Now it's nice to sign, but I got to tell you guys, um, it cuts off the circulation of this room. So I feel like a turkey baking in an oven right now, to be honest with you. And then I have these lights blaming. So like an oven roasted turkey. And so I think I'm going to go with a digital background, to be honest. Uh, this is too much. And then plus I'm over here leaning to the side because I can't adjust the sign unless I actually rebuild my home to have an eight foot ceiling. So I'm already kind of annoyed <laughs> with the new sign. So <laughs> I'm already, you know, I'm, I'm a fairly big guy. So it's not hard to oven roast with this. So, uh, so today we're going to get back to the section eight part of this. So we have a waiting list and uh, all these different lotteries around the country. So places are open, some are not. And then even when they are open, then sometimes they only want to deal with people that have preferences. I am an expert in that area. Let me tell you something about housing authorities. They do, they receive legislation, they modify that, and then they turn it into their own rules. Now, there, there are in six or seven principal rules or special, um, call, I'm going to call it qualifications, okay, or preferences they look for. So when they reopen, they may only want to take in seniors or homeless and then reject the rest of the uh, community. And despite being open, they're only going to select certain people. So I'm an expert in targeting what those things are. If you don't meet the criteria, uh, I'm pretty clever in making sure that your life will eventually meet that criteria very quickly. So I always tell people, if you're going to play the game, play it well. So in all honesty, all we're doing is using legislation, the rules and policies in the same manner that the crooked legislators do. Sometimes, you know what I'm saying? So um, if you, like I said, if you're going to play the game, you have to play it well. Um, so <laughs> I always tell people, you have to suspend your morals and your ethics for about 20 minutes in order to get through it because you're playing a rigged game with these people. It is rigged. It's not, it, it, maybe this was all intended with goodwill 30, 40 years ago, but now it's just a clever game who's smarter. And how do you answer those questions in such a way to game the system? And it's it's a sad, it's very sad. And all this, you know, they really just need to throw it all out the window and start again. Uh, Jazzy, uh, do you have any templates to use or on the application for the waiting list? It seems like I have a better going forward that way. Uh, yeah, well, you know, I create my own. And what I do is I copy in legislation. So I hit them hard. I call it the, the band hammer. When I want to address a housing authority, I go in with legal terms. And so I quote legislation. And what that does is when I quote legislation and other policies written by the United States Senate to people by the phone or by email, the whole phone line goes dead because there's no going to do, there will not be any rebuttal to my conversation. Once I meet you with the highest authority of the highest law in the land, then it shuts them up. And they either comply or they don't comply. And on non compliance, I just go after them at that point. I'll take it directly up in Washington, D.C., and then we'll see about how long their job will last. So beyond that, uh, yes, I do. Uh, I do uh, have different templates that I work with. The thing about it is I have to kind of custom tailor these things to different housing authorities, depending on how organized they are and how difficult they are to deal with. So, now, going back to Section 8 housing, um, now just so you, uh, you guys understand, I'm not doing anything illegal, okay? No more than an attorney does when he fights a, a case in court. Do you think it's, it is a game, right? Uh, and so I represent my clients very well. Now, for those of you who are new joining, I don't do uh, I don't do a HUD consulting. That's different. That's when you go out there and you own a property and you want somebody to consult on uh, the uh, property itself and how it should be built and then those different things. That's a very different field of work. I do consulting specifically in my field. In fact, 
I'm probably only a handful of people that actually do what I do, and I'm I'm pretty sure I'll, I'll lead the nation in what I do. <laughs> I haven't seen any any competitors. Uh, everybody else's uh, that I've seen on Google or uh, YouTube is pretty shady, or uh, they don't seem like they know very much, and so it's understandable. I, I tend to think I've kind of invented this trade. So beyond that, um, when you look at Section 8 housing, a lot of people ask, well, what about uh, how can I get uh, housing? Uh, how, how can I get Section 8 housing passed, or how can I get it as an emergency? Well, that's a mythical unicorn. Um, even if you were in a wheelchair, dying of cancer, a veteran over 75, and you've been on a list a decade, that's not going to qualify you to get anything immediate. In other words, you're not going to just call down the housing authority and get one. Uh, there are other ways to speed this process along, but special purpose or special use vouchers will have to be designated and administered by the county or another county office. And there's clever ways to deal with that. That's where you get a recommendation and it gets backdoored. A phone call secretly kind of happens at the housing authority and they get a direct referral. And even on a closed lighting list, sometimes you can get emergency Section 8 housing or you can get your housing quickly or fast. But even when that happens, it's still a slow process. Um, the quickest I've ever been able to achieve getting a client uh, housing choice voucher or into any type of housing on a closed waiting list was about six days. And that was a pretty much a miracle run. And that was because other fed, a federal agency was involved. Um, you know, the thing I do is I look for weaknesses with housing authorities, you know, if you look at a whole state, the state's got 400 housing authorities. I target ones that I know they have small waiting lists. Then I compel them under federal law to give me and tell me the purpose behind why they're giving vouchers to certain segments. Like if they're just giving them out to seniors, well, I don't know how many seniors are on the list. And through working through that algorithm and figuring that out, I can send somebody down there, and I, I'm pretty sure I know how they're going to break. Now, I'm not saying that I have a crystal ball into this. That comes in only experience, but I do understand in principle how these guys work. And it does help to have about 40 or 50 pissed off housing authority employees that are actual members of my channel that freely call me, give me information, and really do just tell me the inside out of uh, the people they're employed by. I've got a lot of people who answer the phone that do secretarial work in housing authorities around the nation. And let me tell you, there's, nev there's never a clear way to identify everything when they give me all their policies and operations and data manuals. So I have a whole river of those people, and that's not including hundreds of uh, social workers, counselors, same thing. I get everything in their door as well. And that's, gonna, and that's also including the... Um, using Anna McKay, which are the actual subcontractors that write all the manuals for every housing authority in the nation. And so there's, seven, six, there's 76 in principle tests for that. I've got all of their manuals. These are the people who create the manuals for the legislators. So when you do it, uh, yeah, I'm like a national library of nothing but the policies and procedures. So if you know both the answers, if you know the questions, the answers, and what needs to be done, what needs to be said, and you keep it legal, then you'll get housing. Okay, only the clever win this game. Good intentions, you know, the road to, uh, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. You can have all the great intentions in the world. You can have the best sock story in the world, and it doesn't mean the person that's overworked and underpaid at the housing court gives a damn about what your application says. So, like I said, if you want to if you want to play the game, you have to play it well. Uh, looks like uh, Brittany Blends. Hello, Brittany. Thank you for joining the channel. Um, you know, this little uh, side window, it puts small print. It's hard for me to see when people hop in this channel. <laughs> so I'm working on that part. So so now I've talked about how I pretty much dismantle housing authorities and different things. But like I said, I keep things on the up and up. It's not about doing anything special. I don't sell vouchers. I don't do anything illegal. Um, but I'm, I'm exceptional at what I do. And that's why a lot of other YouTube channels attempt to copy me. I've got one lady. She systematically has been trying to copy my videos. And I, you know what, I take that as an honorary thing, but uh, she likes copying my titles and information, but I wish her luck. There's an extent to what people know. Let me tell you something. If you are out there and you're a sandwich maker, then that's what you do. Stay in your lane. Make sandwiches. If you're a mechanic, fix a car. You cannot come out here and give people information on how to be, how to get Section 8 housing when tomorrow you're going to be talking about stimulus checks, okay? And then the week after that, you're going to be good at being a fidget spinner. See what I'm saying? So you're taking advice from people that one day it's a cooking channel, and the next day they're a party clown for a children's party. So I'm going to tell you guys, if you want to get advice from real people, then take it from somebody that has real advice. Um, Jazzy, oh, yeah, you agree? <laughs> good. 
So I know you're patiently waiting, Jazz. We need it sounds like we need to work on your case again. Either that or get you the hell out of Virginia because uh we uh you need to we gotta get you going here. 90 days is too long, Jazz. You're waiting too long, girl. So I don't know if you want to leave the county you're in, but uh we gotta get you into something, even if it's subsidized. So beyond section eight, guys, um subsidized housing is a great option for anybody 24 age 24 and on up. It's especially a principal strong strong to get it at 55 and 62 subsidized houses a lot quicker you're talking about going down to a property filling an application they turn they actually email will turn that in right into the housing authority and you can have a an answer within days now some of these properties only want the housing choice vouchers others are just subsidized so there's a complete difference there for those guys that are in emergency you've lost almost everything you're near homeless or you are actually already homeless i always recommend a continuum of care housing uh, that stuff I can burn you through about 35 days. I have most of your tests, their manuals, and all that. So it really comes down to whether or not you give ethical or unethical questions. Uh, like I said, if you know both the questions and the answers, you really can't fail that. Uh, then in, in principle, it's just whether or not they believe your story. Um, but most people, I would say my success rate with COC housing is close to 99%. The only way you're going to fail to get housing with COC is if you go in there, you're drunk, you're high. Or uh, you get in an argument, or you walk up the building. There's just really no way to do that, to fail that. Subsidized a little tougher. You got to make a lot of calls, and then of course when you deal with the housing authority, even when you sprinkle uh, fairy dust on that mythical dust, uh, the, the big unicorn, the only way you could decrease the 20-year wait, 10-year wait, seven-year wait is getting consulting and somebody that knows what's happening. Results aren't guaranteed, obviously. I do my I do my research, but uh, I'm pretty damn sure you know, you'll rank higher than you did on your own. Okay. I had a client call me yesterday, and uh, based on what was said, with how she was going to fill up that application, they tucked in there six unique questions that seemed like they didn't mean anything. And they did it in such a way that answering those questions would have made the person feel the shame. And because of the, the natural instinct that humans have to not want to answer honestly about shameful questions, would have caused her to actually wait another eight years. See, they're very clever in those questions to ask. They will appeal to your hearing. They will appeal to your vanity and get you to say no and lie and stuff like that. So you see the point? So I call them trick questions because there are a lot of things people don't want to admit. If you actually were honest and admitted certain things about that on your application, it would send you reeling up to this. So these, these things are targeted psychologically at people to get you to answer the wrong way. It's a mind game. It really is in some cases. So. Uh, yeah, Jesse. So, yeah, I know you got to get out of there, girl. <laughs> I spent almost 15K at this point. That's a lot of money. Uh, that's an incredible amount of money, girl. I'm starting to think you're a doctor or a lawyer, Jazzy. Uh, Brittany, how are you doing? So, you're still waiting on your voucher. Uh, you know, Brittany, one thing you can do, <coughs> if I may, you get to renew every year. That's, a, that's your one opportunity once a year when you're doing your renewal. Um, to give them better answers and typically there are six different ways you can give them better answers and each one of those answers are worth 20 you can make a 20 percent jump on that list just by giving different answers the, the, the real question is, is what are those questions and how do you answer them because uh, a lot of people skip the most important parts and um, i don't know man it's like small it's reading the small print um but yeah so I'm sorry to hear you're still waiting. It really does come down to the type of answers. And also, you need to apprise them of your situation as you're going along. Situations change a lot. So does income, disability, age, and all that. And uh, a lot of those things can have an immediate and big impact. Uh, and, and changing one answer can literally mean you skipping up to another 2,000 spots. So that, that's where it comes into play using people like me. Uh, I know I know, just like in school children, you know how to skip this lunch line. Uh, skip ahead. And just it's just a matter of how you're answering these questions, and uh, it's, <laughs> I wish I could say that you know it's what it boils down to after 20 years, and uh, it's how how we answer and what we're forcing them to do. Oh, looks like the ladies are communicating. So let's go back to section eight again. So you know, a lot of things. If you're 55 and older and uh, you're interested in consulting, I would advise giving me uh, you know, not a call, but come down to the website, talk to me. Uh, there's a section in there. Let me just show you guys real quick. And I've worked pretty hard to get this done, but as you can see, it loads in about one second. And uh, when you click up here, you got a book appointment. 
And I kept it in principle very simple. I wanted this to be usable to people that were damn near blind, okay? I wanted to respect people with disability, whether you're old or you can't see well. And so I put everything in big and bold letters down. You can book the appointment very easily with anything. It doesn't matter. It could be a gift card from Walmart. It doesn't matter as long as it has a Visa logo. And below it, you can actually uh, contact me about anything. You know, so I'm putting it up a little closer so you can see it. Look, guys, please don't write your whole story. Uh, keep in mind, I get about 3,000 emails every month, and I am one of those people that I do care about. That's the difference. When you got people on YouTube that want to sell you little books and programs and bullshit, that's what it is. It's just complete bullshit. Okay? If I'm out here offering this a half hour of my life, that's what it is, a half hour of my day to teach you exactly what you need to do. That's serious. I'm not out here selling you books and programs and bullshit. That's what that some of that stuff I've seen on YouTube is. Complete horseshit. So I'm just going to be upfront with you. If you want to deal with somebody that's real that gets real results, it's pretty easy to see, but I distinguish myself in that in that respect. So I tell you, you know, right, tell me what's going on with your life in there, and I'll respond back. I do care. Let me tell you something. I brought entire one guy had 12 children in a tent in the woods. I got him and his family out of the woods and in a home. I got another lady, uh, two uh, retired couples. They were 70 and 85. Okay. I got them out of a hopeless, uh, homeless shelter where they were rotting, basically just rotting in a homeless shelter. Got them out of there. I had another mother that just had a baby. It took a couple of weeks. I got her off the street. I mean, we're talking about living under the bridge with a tarp over a basket. I'm not joking about these things. Some nights it's hard for me to even sleep. So if I didn't care what actually happened to people, my channel would be, my YouTube channel would be absolutely riddled with angry, pissed off people saying it was a scam. I dare you to go and find anything, any anything in my channel. Even if I removed the comments, I couldn't remove the fact that almost every video has 100% likes. You can't you can't manipulate that. So that's the thing, man. It's a, it's a big investment. The most important thing in your life is your housing. And to be honest with you, Besides your car, your home is your most important thing. And if you're not willing to invest a few dollars to ensure that you can get your home to get a $20,000 discount against your rent, then I've got, for God's sake, you're in trouble. Because you probably spent $45 more on Starbucks, cigarettes, and booze than you did, than you're willing to spend on your own housing. And that's terrible. You guys have got to respect yourself. You got to, you got to help yourself get through it. Maybe in the old days, this was simple, but it's not anymore. I wouldn't be sitting here reading 1,100 pages of legislation every year if I thought it was simple. If it was just simple, then anybody could do this stuff. So let's take a look at some of these comments here. Uh, Spall White, hurry up and fill out applications before the deadlines, and then you'll have to wait, wait, wait. Well, uh, now I realize that uh, sometimes that, that – let me tell you something. Uh, there's no mistake this isn't easy. So I know that it's not like going to the mall – you know, when you go down to Macy's and, you know, they give you, uh, you know, a martini and uh, you kick your feet up. This is Section 8. And you got to be a hustler, okay? If you're not a hustler and you're not and you're not you're patient and you're not willing to wait, then it's going to be tough, um, even with the magic that I have. And I warn you guys about that all the time. Um, Grace, uh, Cherry by Grace. I lost my voucher. I couldn't find a place. I had no idea what I was doing. We might be able to recover that voucher, actually, because you can get an extension. You know, the interesting thing about housing authorities is they never they, they, they tell the truth, but they never tell you the whole truth. They'll say, oh, well, here's your 90-day voucher, but they never told you that you could renew it. So the lack of information to help you fail. That's just one of the many clever things that housing authorities do. It's really not. They're not compelled by federal law to tell you the whole truth or to tell you to have any rights. They don't do that. So you actually just went out there and thought that that was the end of the game. That's not. That could be recovered. Um, Brittany, I, I currently live in Florence, South Carolina, porting, porting to my Maryland. So you want to port to Maryland? So you're going to need a um, an RTA packet to get that process going. It takes about 45 days. You're going to have to deal from one housing specialist to another. It's a little bit, I won't say it's complicated, but it can be a little bit depending on whether or not they're billing and absorbing. Um, and so I, I would have to get more detail about that in one of my other videos. I'm actually transfer, transferring to New York to Las Vegas. That's a good decision. New York is a hot mess. A lot of people haven't even received rental assistance from the federal government, from the ERAP. So I got to tell you, probably being in uh, Los Angeles and New York right now is a terrible decision. I've advised many of my clients to at least leave the county and go to a different area, if not even the state. New York, 30% uh, of my clients right now are leaving New York. I've been porting them and moving them uh, all over, uh, especially uh, down to, um, well, that just flew out of my head. I guess Virginia. 
Pennsylvania, that's where I've been sitting. Pennsylvania is going to accept the easing housing system. So I've been sending a lot of clients down to Pennsylvania. A lot of success there. Eric Show, thank you, Jay. You helped me so much yesterday morning. Uh, let's go. Oh, yeah. I remember talking to you. Yeah. Uh, actually, you were actually one of my more polite clients. You know, you know, one thing you guys don't realize is that a lot of low income people also suffer from mental illness and they treat me very badly. Uh, they, don't, they don't have a strong grasp of reality and they say things that would absolutely break your kind of break your uh, mind a little bit when you're on the phone with them. So I'm always appreciative when people are kind of sane and pleasant to deal with. And I'm going to tell you this week's been a good week. I haven't had neurotic people and I do get them. I get a lot of people and they actually blame me for the housing authority. They blame me for the housing situation. They'll blame me even for the drug addictions, you know, and stuff like that, you know. Um, I understand complicated situations, and I'm still willing to deal with people that have severe mental disabilities. But however, I will not be treated like trash, no matter if you pay me or not. I am not going to be put in servitude. You get my point? So I, I love people. I'll continue to love you whether you're out there or not. So, but anyways, uh, just to say that Michelle was a good client, and so was Jasmine. Um, let's see. Lots of comments here. You helped me with it. Booking my appointment now. I appreciate that, Brittany. I'm really looking forward to that. I think you'll like me. One thing that's unique about me is my personality changes with each consult. So if you're from the hood, I'll talk hood. If we're uh, if you're uh, blue collar, I'll talk blue collar. If you're a Cajun from Louisiana, I'll take talk Cajun to you. Look, I can talk to anybody in any manner. Uh, I'm known. Uh, I have a legendary reputation for cursing while talking. Uh, I like to make sure that my service appeals to everybody and any manner that you'd like to receive. So if you like to get down and just, you know, talk a little bit of shit, then I'm okay with that. Uh, so uh, anyways, um, yeah, man, look, Jazzy, we're, we're, we're going to get excited about getting you that uh, and helping you out there. <laughs> so let's go on and move back to Section 8 housing. So, you know, besides me, Toot, no horn, and all that, I really don't have much to prove. Most people, it's evidentiary. You know, 160 videos later, six years on YouTube, I don't really, there's nothing I need to prove to anybody at this point. Uh, you know, even a killer website, which I'm loving that website. Um, so you guys should check that out. It's uh, www.consulting.com, uh, section8consulting.com. And uh, boy, I tell you, we put a lot of work in it. Spend a couple of months. I spent about a 40 hour week. That's why I vanished for three weeks, uh, working with a full stack developer at all hours of the day, just meticulously going through every part. Hired some blog writers out of Brazil that work for a news agency. Hired another guy in California and another young man out of Germany. Uh, I like pulling people from around the world. As long as you've got credentials, uh, you have serious credentials, I'm definitely doing that. So we got big things planned for the website. But again, the price of what I've offered hasn't changed much uh, since I began all of this. And most of you don't know, as I always tell you, you know, I've, I've been doing this next to what now, 18 years. And um, for the vast majority, I did it absolutely free for people. You know, there was a point I had to reach out to charge people. I can't work, in, you know, 15 hour days and not be paid for anything, including my own cell phone bill. So that, that's necessary. Uh, so I know some people complain. I had an old client come back. Oh, is your service still 1250? No, ma'am, it's not. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you do, I think some of y'all remember those days when I did that. It was uh, 1250 for a consult. <laughs> uh, what's the best states to live in? Okay, so let me be perfectly honest with states and where to live and deal with, okay? If you're going to be on the West Coast, forget that. If you're going to be Upper West Coast, Oregon, Washington, yes. Well, anywhere up in the uh, Midwest, okay? Things are very simple. Get you through that pretty quick. Don't go down to the south. I'm from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, down to Cages and the Creoles down there, okay? Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. Look, you do not want to go back in time with those folks down there. They're all good people. But unless you want to live in a poor-ass state, do not do that, okay? Besides that, it's got other problems in those states. I think most people understand that. So I don't recommend the dirty south. Um, I don't even recommend that. Uh, I don't recommend Georgia unless you're going to go up to uh, Atlanta or uh, Augusta. Okay, Florida, a good place as well. But you know, Florida's getting kind of crowded, so I don't know. The prices seem to be moving and shaking. Texas is a great state; it's cheap. You can still get a, a one-bedroom apartment down here for five, six hundred dollars. You get a four-bedroom house uh, for a little less than eleven hundred. Some of you guys are living in a broom closet in New York. For thirty-two hundred dollars, you could have a five-bedroom house over here, and then keep the extra two grand. You know, I don't understand it. I've tried to port you guys out of Jersey, New York, so many times, and y'all like living in the broom closet. 
I understand you got family and culture there, but you know, look, you can be a New Yorker anywhere. You can always respect your family and where you come from, but you can do it in a different place. I'm a Cajun. Look, I told my mother when I left Louisiana, look, I can bowl crawfish and talk shit to anybody. It doesn't matter where I live. I can do it anywhere. You know, I don't need to live in Louisiana to be a Cajun. So, <laughs> okay. So moving back to section eight. So I'm just ranting today, but I'm excited to see you all uh, after a couple of weeks. So, yeah, if you need help in subsidized housing, Section 8 housing, uh, COC housing, or trying to get it passed, get it as an emergency, or if you have other complicated issues, look, I deal. let me just go down a list of things um, that I deal with from my own website. So just bear with me a minute, and I'll, I'll read them off to you real quick. So on the tenant side, I handle emergency housing, you know, application assistance, uh, rental assistance, voucher, uh, voucher porting and moving, uh, landlord complaints, housing discrimination, case management, research, property location services, affordable housing, subsidized housing, public housing, HUD housing, tenant-based housing, project-based housing, senior housing, homeless housing, rapid rehousing, permanent supportive housing. And on the landlord service side, I offer professional consulting and research. I uh, help you get set up with the housing authority. I negotiate uh, thousands, if not tens of thousands of incentives as a Example, I got uh, one landlord uh, about 50000 in incentives uh, before he even opened the building, okay? Uh, determining the best vouchers and tenants. So, you know, I, from that perspective, I'm good. I work with clients. Um, getting the highest rents per unit, uh, meeting and passing inspections, meeting occupancy's goals, uh, smartest way to market and advertise, specialize in leasing and amendments uh, and property rules, effective in tenant screening, uh, avoiding and uh, resolving tenant conflict, eviction policies and procedures, uh, establishing a relationship with the city, the county, nonprofits, and charities. I work for both type of clients. The only thing that I will not do is I will not take on slumlords. If you you have to be a balanced person to be a landlord, so I'm just gonna jump in there real quick. If you want to hire me, you're gonna have to be a good landlord that cares about tenants because I care about the people that are on my channel as much as I care about my landlords, and I will not do business with a slumlord. I'm not going to deal with people to try to screw the tenants either, okay? So you're always welcome to hire me for that service, but I can tell you right now I won't do it. Also, I will not uh, allow I will not uh, allow any tenants to enter a uh, property that abuse children, animals, the seniors, elderly, or women. If you're an abuser of those animals, children, uh, women, or the elderly, uh, you will not be allowed on my properties or anything that I deal with. Now, I understand there are some situations domestically that happen between men and women that are like didn't, didn't cause any battery. But outside of those rare exceptions, I will not have abusers in any property that I deal with for landlords. If you want to accept those people, then you will not be utilizing my uh, services, period. And I'm serious about that, torturing animals, children, and women, and elderly. If you do shit like that, you're not going to be on my channel, and you're certainly not going to be in the properties I deal with. All right, beyond that, guys, let's take a look. Um, are there any clean, affordable senior housing near Los Angeles, too? Uh, I generated a list for uh, senior housing, 55 plus, 62 plus. I think that we have uh, 373 options now, there at last time I checked. And then Ashley Review, I recently was informed Section 8 about being paid by Google, but it was once a month, and I'm wondering how they determine my added income. Uh, Ashley, I'd have to get with you on that privately because... Um, there's a lot more questions. That one kind of goes in depth. I apologize for not being able to give you a direct answer on that. Maybe just shoot me an email on my uh, website. Uh, Jazzy, Midwest, Georgia, Florida, Texas. <laughs> Midwest, Texas, uh, Upper West Coast. Upper West Coast. Don't forget that, Jazzy. Uh, Seattle, Washington. It's gorgeous out there. It's just not as complicated. A little bit pricey. Uh, you know, uh, you know, by the way, guys, I also port people to Hawaii and Puerto Rico. So if you want to live in a tropical island, Puerto Rico, you can get out there and you don't spend that much money living there. If you go to Honolulu, that's a different story. It's a bit costly. But hey, if you're always if you're always going to be low income or you're retired and you're on a fixed income, why not go live on a damn beach in Honolulu? Why would you want to live in an insufferable city in a broom closet for no reason? When you can go live in Hawaii? I don't understand that. If the family's gone, everybody's dead, and you're a senior, go and put yourself to Honolulu. At least you can put your toes in the sand. You know, you can be broke on a beach. You don't have to be broke in, a, in the projects. Seriously, rethink rethink the way that you're thinking, okay? Um, Aaron, uh, how long does that uh, porting process usually take? 
my experience tells me on average 45 days so we have to communicate uh, first with the housing specialist at the current housing authority then uh, once we get approval there then we have to communicate that to the next housing authority which has up to two weeks to do so, uh, to answer sometimes even longer and then of course the the process of you actually moving filling out the appropriate paperwork make sure everything's correct so i'm going to say on average 45 days but before you can port any type of voucher you need to ensure that you can successfully completed a 12-month lease. Remember that vouchers are not the same value in every state. If you're a New Yorker and you have a voucher, that thing's a powerful thing. Why? New Yorkers, get their vouchers are worth thousands. Now, if you're from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and your voucher's worth $400, do you really think the New York Housing Authority wants to take your shitty little voucher worth $400 when you're applying for one bedroom that costs $5,000? So you need to find comparable cities. Otherwise, they're going to decline you, and that's really going to be the reason. They're not going to tell you that's the reason, but they're not going to want to pick up an additional $2,500 that your voucher doesn't have. So you have to think reasonably. I got a lot of you uh, seniors that are trying to get me, you want me to port you to crazy places like uh, the Key West. Look, it's expensive there. You cannot bring $800 voucher and move into an area where uh, an area or an island where you know it, the rent's going to be $2,000. they are not going to want that voucher. It's worthless. Just to be honest, okay? <laughs> Uh, Jazzy, what did you spend so much on, if you don't mind me asking? I don't know who that's directed towards. So, um, living in a hotel, about 1300 a month, uh, in the past nine months of renting a apartment. Man, 1300 to 1500 for a hotel. I can think of so many beautiful places you can actually hold homes in Houston, Dallas, uh, Austin, Texas, that you could be living in right now with that hotel. Um, Sherry, by the grace, uh, thank you, but it's been two years ago, and I didn't get the extension, but it's Cape Cod. Okay, uh, you know what, Sherry? We, I'm still going to attempt to try to see if we can recover that, at least hold them responsible. They should have apprised you of federal rules. They did not do that. If I can prove that they can't, they did not, did, didn't do that. In, in lieu of also changing your current answers, we might be able to make something happen quicker, sooner than uh, later, okay? So um, we'll, we'll definitely look into that. Now I'm going to move back to Section 8 again, and I'll keep my eye off to the side here because I realize you guys are asking a lot of different questions. I'm not able to get to all of them, clearly. Um, besides the porting, uh, porting you guys all around the nation, you know, um, one thing I would like for you guys to start focusing on is subsidize. You guys are fighting a very long battle with these housing authorities to get these housing choice vouchers <coughs> when you can get tenant-based housing. And again, Tenant-based housing is not project-based. Tenant-based just means you can live in any property, but the rent is connected to the unit. That's a much faster process. So if you are 55 and older, please contact me about that. Look, guys, I can move you just about anywhere around the nation to do that. Uh, you're, you're going through insufferable lines. Um, and, guys, you know, at the end of the year, by the time this pandemic has had its complete impact, you know, I was working 80, 90-hour weeks trying to get you guys housed in between January and January, February, March, and April, I, I like to die. I mean, uh, the calls were, uh, we're talking 15-hour days on the phone with you guys until it finally died off. In one week, it died off. So uh, I was fighting to get you guys rent and housing. It was absolutely wild. I'm glad I've had a break, and that's the reason that I've been able to work on this website. But I'm going to tell you guys, when we get near the end of this year, the, the truth, we're going to have a second wave of eviction. So 11 million people, middle-class people, or now, which they were formerly middle class, now they're just low, well, I'm not going to say low class, let's just say they don't have a lot of money, so now they're just low rent. These people all are going to be entering the market, and, and a market that's already overextended, guys. So you you guys have got to start getting your housing situation together. Now, if we start getting past, when we get to the summer, I can tell you my channel is going to light up like a Christmas light bulb, and it's going to be people running and scrambling to get housing. If you guys are not getting in subsidized, if you're not getting your voucher, you're not getting a COC housing, you're going to be stuck out. And with the pandemic, if you lose everything, you get put out, your stuff's on the sidewalk, and you're looking for an emergency shelter, there won't even be a homeless shelter to go to. Most homeless shelters are closed, they have capacity, and have a you know unbelievable wait. I never thought I'd see it in my lifetime that we would have a waiting list for a damn shelter. Okay, I expect that in San Francisco or New York, but I'm finding that most of these shelters don't have a place. So I'm just telling you, don't play with your ability to get home. I don't want to have to rescue you guys off the sidewalk, out of the woods, in the bushes. And a lot of you seniors, I'm, a lot of them lately have been calling me from your cars. I've got CEOs, former CEOs, companies collapsed in San Francisco. Now they're living in their BMW, okay? It's serious, it's serious times, folks. 
I found an apartment in Hawaii for 600, one bedroom, and I'm on their waiting list too. Now, Jazzy, now you know if you get down to Hawaii, I'm going to want uh, a souvenir girl <laughs> and some pictures because I had to tell you, if you live in Texas, we have doo doo brown water. It's called Galveston. And that water is shitty brown, and I would not put one toe in that, okay? I'm not trying to be offensive, but I got to tell you, if I'm going to go to a beach, the water needs to be at least clear at minimum and then blue. In Texas, unfortunately, our water is on the Gulf, Gulf of Mexico, and it's some pretty <laughs> nasty water. I would not throw my worst enemy in there, okay? <laughs> Anyways, um, sorry, uh, Sherry says, uh, sorry, I wasn't clear about the voucher being retrievable. It was two years ago. Oh, okay. Those two years ago, so we, you know, we have a 50 50 chance of fighting that deal. If not, then we could resubmit an application in a different way and also look at some other options, Sherry, for you uh, to see what we can do with that situation. So, well, guys, it's been about 40 minutes and I'm about to go blind from these lights in my eyes. I've enjoyed talking with y'all. I know we didn't get in deep with everything, but look, I got 160 videos. It's no secret uh, how to get section out, section eight housing at this point. So, my advice is if you don't want to sit there, okay, every day, and watch 20 hours of videos, okay? Watch 20 hours of videos with a notepad and try to figure it all out. You know, allocate $45 to improve your life. Once I take, once I drive the boats, once I'm driving the car for you, life gets a whole lot easier, okay? If I wasn't able to do what I say I can do and all the other things that I'm saying, I would not be posting people's vouchers, pictures of the actual vouchers on my YouTube channel, okay? If I couldn't do what I was saying and get people into housing, this channel would have been wrecked a long time ago. YouTube would have taken me down. Uh, the the comment section would be riddled with angry people. So, you know, I've told you guys, and I'll tell you again, I'm one, I am absolutely the best in the nation of what I do. There's no disputing that. In fact, um, when it comes to YouTube, I will also make that claim. I am the absolute best at getting section of housing on YouTube and also Google. In fact, uh, I know our website's going to be ranked number one on Google for just about every Section 8 related term. And it's going to take us about a month now. I've hired a crack team to help me with SEO. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm going to push down all these rodeo clowns making blogs and articles. And what it is, all these blogs and articles, if you're looking for answers about Section 8 housing on uh, Google, which you find are a bunch of idiots. They create One person creates a halfway decent uh, guide. And then all 48 other blogs copy it, they respin it, and it's garbage. So you can't even get an intelligible answer off of Google anymore. So I'm going to make it my personal mission to push down all these garbage blogs and bullshit advice that are given on Google. And I'm going to start correcting some of that information on the Internet to help people. Because I'm sick of seeing that. People struggling to get an answer. And some of these answers are giving on Google. What's coming out of Google is just terrible. I mean, it's just sending. It's like sending your dog to chase its tail. I mean, the information is just so far off. Reality is crazy. That's what happens when you have people copying each other. The goal is to get you to click on their website, watch an ad so they can make a few nickels or dimes, and they don't give a shit about what kind of garbage they tell you in the website. So what you get is a bunch of bad information. Same thing I've been watching play out on YouTube. Everybody wants to get in the Section 8 game. Oh, well, I'm an expert. I'm this, I'm that. Ask them if they have one single credential. Nope. Just a bobbing head. A bobbing head with about six bullet points, and they tell you, oh, well, I'm an expert. No, you're not. You're really not. Um, so anyways, I don't mean to beat anybody down. I just I get tired of having people get ripped off and have to take it bad advice. It really does drive me crazy. All right, Jazzy and the rest of you, I've enjoyed having you all on my channel, and uh, we're going to call it a day. Uh, I'm going to make another video later today, uh, possibly next week. Um, we're going to address the website and some different changes for the channel. And I don't really want to go through all that in this video. But uh, we're going to be offering some new and different services, all of which are inexpensive, okay? My goal is not to be a millionaire. <laughs> I'm not even trying to be rich. I'm not trying to make a living off of this. I just want to help people. That has not changed. My mission and goals never changed with that. And I still offer my services for free for a lot of people that I believe that have a compelling case. So uh, I'm not driven by money. I have a real job, and I do real things, you know. And I, I mostly make money from my landlords. So it's never going to be my goal to drive my price so high. But a homeless person would have to panhandle for a week just to get a consult, okay? I'm a reasonable, equitable, and fair man. And uh, it's I take it very personally when I deal with people's cases. It matters to me what happens to you, your children, your family, and your elderly. All those things matter. 
some of you got pets and cats and service dogs that you care about immensely and you don't want to have to give that up to go and, and go sit in some damn shelter i understand that i understand what we need to do in order to, to make your life a little bit easier so if you're tired of driving and you try to drive in that boat <laughs> And you try to try to reckon it and get second guessing yourself. The easiest way is just get with somebody that really does know. My reputation stands alone, and I've enjoyed uh, talking with y'all. Have a great day.